Since March of 2020, so much has changed. How we work, how we live, the tools we use, the way we collaborate. Hello and welcome to The Bridge. Join host Scott Kinka in a series of discussions of how some of the top leaders in technology bridged their businesses, technology, roadmaps, and lives into their new hybrid work reality. Our hope is that their insights and experiences will help you on your journey in business and in life from who we were to who we are today. And maybe it'll help you get better prepared for whatever comes next. The Bridge is a service of Bridgepoint Technologies, one of the nation's leading IT advisory, procurement, and life cycle management companies. Now, here's your host. Hi, and welcome to The Bridge. My guest on this episode is Chris Rayburn, the Chief Marketing Officer of Nextiva. He's a Chiefs fan, and I'm recording this intro a day after the Super Bowl, one for the ages, and one my Eagles did not win. So as hard as it is to be gracious right now, I still have to say this is one of my favorite episodes. Chris is a C-level exec and a marketer in a company that Chris considers the anti-tech company. They started out like several businesses that we've talked to on the pod. It's a UCAS provider based around a Broadsoft stack, which was a software platform that eventually got purchased by Cisco that powered many of the early VoIP providers. Back then, the conversation with customers was about moving from prem to cloud. It wasn't really about features until it became about features when the several SaaS companies jumped in to become part of the story. You're not good if you're running other people's software. It's all about the features. Valuations followed. Today, even those companies, those great companies, are reckoning with the post-COVID dominance of Teams and Zoom. And yet, Nextiva survived and thrived throughout all of those stages. When everyone else was developing their own app to communicate, Nextiva was focused on how complicated it was going to get when all of those op applications reached critical mass in adoption. By their numbers, the average worker uses 15 to 20 applications a day to communicate, losing up to two hours or so in contact switching. Nextiva is indeed a hosted voice provider with their own software, but that software is designed as a conversation-based work hub where all of your apps can be seen in real time, including their own features. Voice, chat, meeting, sure, but also Teams, Slack, Zoom, messaging apps, CRMs, one place. Their mission to eliminate silos is what makes up their market approach today. Rather than fight the others, they decided to play nice with all of them and take advantage of our desire for ease of use. And in the meantime, they're going to get some valuable time back. What's the best app? Well, according to Chris, the right channel for customers is the one they want to use. Okay, I can get behind that. Let's check out my conversation with Chris Rayburn from Nextiva. Hello, and welcome to The Bridge. I'm your host, Scott Kinka. My guest today on the pod is Chris Rayburn, who is the uh, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, I assume, but we'll get into that, of Nextiva, who I, I learned this morning is the official partner of the PAC-12. Uh, we'll learn probably a little bit more about that as we get into that. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Good morning, Scott. Thank you for having me on. Uh, super excited to do this today. Fantastic. Um, so, Chris, at, we'll start this. I'm just going to jump right into it because we usually start with a little bit of an intro and we'll come back to that. But what I understand is that you are a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Our listeners are very clear that I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. It happened. It's the, now that we're recording this, so everybody's aware. Let's just get it out the Wednesday before the Super Bowl. And we expect that this episode will drop the Monday or Tuesday after the Super Bowl. So we're just putting you right on the spot. Let's hot take this. Chris is in the colors. What's the analysis? Give us some prediction and don't homer it. Like you can give me a, you give me a sentence or two on your analysis here. We want to get it. Oh, perfect. No. So we're in Scottsdale, Arizona, which is ground zero for, uh, for Super Bowl prep this week. Um, everything you see all over town is either Eagles green or chiefs red. So of course I'm having to wear my, my chiefs red. Um, I suffered through a lot of lean years in Kansas city with people like Tyler Bray and Tyler Palco as our quarterbacks. So I'm <laughs> super happy to have the guy, you know, Patrick Mahomes is our quarterback. Uh, I know that hurts is a hurts is a you know, the real deal. He's a super good quarterback and we've got a Kelsey brother on both sides. I'm still going with the chiefs because we got the best player on the field. Okay. And you know what? I think that's a reasonable take. I'll give you. Can you give me a score? Is this a chance? Uh, you know, is it close? What do you got? I, I think it's. I think it's close. I think there's going to be some scoring, right? Um, I, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, you know 31-27. I think it'll be a little bit more than a field goal. Um, you know, it's going to be close. That 
that running attack and the receivers that uh, that the Eagles have are really really dangerous. So I'm excited. To, I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to see the Kelsey brothers play against each other. I think that's going to be a fun fun sub sub storyline. It would be a lot more fun if they were on opposite sides of the ball. That would be great. Um, yes, it certainly Chris, would. Old Chris Kelsey, Jason is my neighbor at the Jersey Shore. Not here in Pennsylvania, but he his family lives on our street uh, in Sea Isle City, New Jersey. So we see him on the beach all the time. But like one little girl under each arm walking around this beach like a viking it's he said they are uh and travis has been there with them we've run into them at our favorite hot dog spot so uh that's a great Amazing. little uh subplot to this thing i'll give mine since it's before that obviously i'm going to pick the eagles nobody's going to be shocked by that from an analysis perspective i'll just say yes chiefs have the best player on the planet um eagles have the best pass rush rush since the chicago bears won the super bowl statistically speaking right um, so I think that's the matchup. I think the offenses, you guys are probably a little bit better, but I think the gap on the defenses is wide. So I think it's going to be a scoring affair, um, and I think it's going to be a squeaker. Um, but I think what's going to happen is the Eagles' defensive line is going to get to uh, get to Mahomes four times in this game, um, and that's ultimately going to be the difference in a 27-24 Super Bowl victory for the Eagles. So um, we came in pretty close, though. I think uh, yeah, you might you might be right. If they get to, if they get to Mahomes four times, I think you might be right. I think that that you know that that could be the difference right there. Yeah, I'm sure you see the narrative, right? Uh, four guys with double digit sacks on that front yeah. four. It's just kind of crazy. I also read today that uh, that the uh, if they if it's five, I said four for a reason. But if it were five sacks, it would be the single highest sack total for an NFL football team in recorded history. Um, actually, they would they they'd pass the eighty five Bears. Um, wow. Interestingly, and yeah, we'll see. I don't think it's going to happen five times. So I think the Bears will keep that crown. All of you Chicagoans who are listening to this, all right. Well, let's jump into the pod while we're at it, um, Chris. Let's just start with you. Uh, interesting guy in your Chiefs colors. Happened to be in Phoenix, so we'll have to hear a little bit more about that and Chiefs fandom. But tell us about Chris. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at Nextiva. We're based in Scottsdale, Arizona. I actually live maybe about uh, 45 minutes south in uh, um, Queen Creek, Arizona, which is a you know small community that has still has a lot of horse farms and ranches, you know, working ranches in that area. Mm -hmm. um, you know, love to love to be able to say that we're uh, in tech, uh, in communications, obviously, but not uh, of Silicon Valley. Uh, you know, to the point where you know we still you know look at at Scottsdale and Phoenix area as as our home, and and we're super excited for for the businesses that are around us. Uh, so. You know, we're kind of the anti-tech tech company to, to some extent. I got it. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit more about that then. Just give me the, before we jump into it, and, you know, we expect people are going to learn more about Nextiva over the course of the pod, but just give me the, give me the elevator pitch so people know who you are. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting. Like what I'll get to is, you know, some of the, some of the problems that, that our customers face and how we approach them. I, you know, I've listened to a number of the podcasts actually, you know, have, have become over the last few weeks a, a, a dedicated listener and, and someone was on the on the on the podcast i can't remember who and, and you had asked them the, the mission question and and you know they said um you know their vision was to deliver uh, intelligent connected experiences and my my take on that is is you know of course that's that's what we're all trying to do um you know but when we think about our customers our customers aren't typically you know solving problems at that level they their their problems are more fundamental they want to they want to you know, communicate effectively with with their customers. They want to build relationships with their teammates, and ultimately, they want to grow, right? You know, so you know, how do we do that? Of course, you know, delivering connected experiences in an intelligent, native way. Of course, but but we take the approach of, you know, make the technology approachable, make it affordable, and make it accessible, right? So for us, obviously, Nextiva, you know, folks know us reasonably well. We're a conversations based work hub. Uh, that brings you know software, a lot of the same software tools together to communicate with customers, to collaborate with teams, and ultimately manage relationships. Um, you know, and, and like a lot of the, the folks that are on the pod, uh, we also have UCAS at the core. Um, you know, and, and you know, I see a lot of what what your guests talk about in terms of the convergence of some of the some of the uh, technologies in terms of UC and CC and how that's changing the landscape. Um, and of course, all of that applies because those are industry trends. But our take is generally a little bit different, right? We think about um, bringing all of the channels of communication together, not just necessarily in the same application, but into a single conversation, mm -hmm. right? So the ability to thread um, emails and text together with, um, you know, with, with voice communications or transcripts with voicemails and, and have one cogent 
uh, thread of conversation with customers or teammates that spans multiple modes of conversation, right? That's that's one component that we would say is going maybe a little bit, little bit beyond just bringing those experiences together natively in one app. And then enabling, and this is, this is where a lot of folks go and, and hopefully you know, we're doing it the right way, uh, is bringing team collaboration and customer communications together in the same place. There's been, um, there has been a lot of development around siloed tools uh, that have specific unitary purposes. And I think the, where the industry and really the world is getting to is that you know, people are getting tired of um, switching amongst different applications to get work done, right? And the idea that we bring you know, team communication or team collaboration and customer communications into a single experience, I think gets to the core of a lot of what your other guests talk about in terms of why it makes so much sense to bring UC and CC together you know, in, a, in, a, in a cohesive way. Totally. Uh, and then yeah. you know, for us, it becomes from there about how to use communications as a way to drive the relationship, the, the, particularly the customer relationship, how to you know, create experiences where uh, the conversation is captured and the context from that conversation is captured and it can be shared, uh, it can be retained and can be used across the organization uh, you know, to, to build better relationships. And that's, that's really when we talk about what, what our platform is about, that's really what, what we get to and, and what we're trying to do as we interact with our customers. Interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to read part of that back um, to you, but I'm going to do, I'm going to give it with a little bit of my own take. Um, you know, I've spent, um, we didn't talk about this on the pre-show, but you've listened. So obviously um, probably have a feel that I have, a, I've got a history in a similar market, right? I was at, a, I was at Evolve IP. It was the CTO over there. Um, Broadsoft shop, right? <laughs> Grew it up throughout. Uh, talked about that a lot on a, a few of the episodes with some of the folks who earned some of those early stripes. But, you know, heading into the, I'd say the mid, you know, 2010s, there was this arms race on software, right? Like it was okay before that, to just be a UCAS provider who could make the phone ring in a different way. Um, and then it became about writing stuff. Um, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. And we know who all the players are. We've had many of them on the phone and we've talked to many of them on the pod and we've talked about strengths and weaknesses. I always found the Nextiva approach to be very interesting. Right, because we toyed like, are we going to get in the collaboration business? Or are we eventually going to get run over by Microsoft one day? <laughs> right, so we we came up with we came to a different conclusion at Evolve, but you guys sort of went in this mode where you were like, you know what, we're not going to develop collaboration. And I want you to correct me if I'm wrong on that. This is yeah. my impression was, you know, we're not necessarily going to compete head to head on collaboration, but we're going to take an application step up and just say like, people are going to be in mail, people are going to be in social. People are going to be in and basically say, hey, like instead of instead of fighting, we're going to coexist, but we're going to try to one up everybody with this idea that we've got this sort of dashboard of comms, um, yeah. every method in and out. Did I close off? Correct yeah, me? No, that, that's absolutely right. I mean, you know, directionally and, and there was. You know, I can't remember was and I'm, I'm 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 at an advantage today because I actually I've got some of the stuff that you said recently yeah. you know fresh in my mind. But there was one where you were citing a Microsoft study in terms of the best workplace habits, and you mentioned that you you you're you're like the worst offender of all of them in terms of um, you know how to schedule meetings at the 25 and the 55 and and all that all that great sounding stuff that no one really does. Um, and and part of what they were getting to in Microsoft's case, and, and you were getting to, is this idea of context switching, right? And the cognitive load that context switching has when you go from one meeting to another. Well, we see the same thing, and maybe even more so, when, when uh, users are switching between separate applications to communicate with customers, collaborate with their teammates, and manage the relationships. Because they're, you know, in, in any given day, and we, we've actually done studies on this and, and we've read, you know, obviously a lot, there's, there's a lot of, you know, you know reasonable uh, secondhand research or second party research as well. Um, you know, that there's as much as one to two hours of app switching involved in an average knowledge worker's day. Wow. Right. And, and, and what, what we've seen, that, that was the, the industry work. What we've seen is, you know, anywhere between 15 to 25 separate applications to communicate, collaborate, manage customer relationships. And then you're constantly switching between those things and the cognitive load from those things becomes overwhelming at a point. And if you, if you think about the, the, the CIO, um, you know, a lot of cases they're on the receiving end of the need for these applications because we, we didn't all start with everything, yeah. right? These channels grew up around us. So we started with email and, and, and voice-based communications. Then, you know, it's somewhere we, 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 you know, plugged in a, a contact center, then, um, you know, video channel, 
right? You know, you know, emerged and then chat and then text and then social and then messenger. Now it's WhatsApp. And it just becomes overwhelming at a point where as a, as a CIO, it's difficult to manage that technology from the business standpoint. Part of the reason that there's so much frustration amongst users and customers is that this application switching is happening all over the place. And not only is the cognitive load really heavy on, on the user or the employee, but the customer, you know, and, and, and you, I'm sure you've had this experience where you call into a company, it's like they don't even know you because right. the, the entirety of your history is in some other application or some other tool or was made with some other department or in some other, app, uh, some other uh, you know, channel of communication. And there's no connectivity between them, right? right? So at, at a fundamental level, that's, that's where we're going. I think, I think ultimately that's where everyone will go. At least I hope it is. That, you know, because you know, what we see is the need for consolidation amongst those channels, not, not to eliminate them. I think that's actually the wrong answer, but to bring those channels together in a way that creates, a, you know, a cohesive conversation between, between two, any two parties, whether it's, you know, teammates or whether it's customers. Gotcha. So, so to your point, yeah, you're right. That's, that's kind of the direction we're, 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 we're leaning in and, and, and going with our platform. And you were there pre-pandemic. I mean... I was, yes. I yep. mean, and the, the strategy, I should have said, the strategy that you were just talking about was not a pandemic reaction. You guys were already seeing this handwriting pre-pandemic. Yeah, it, it, it really was. And, and um, you know, I'll, I'll talk about, you know, kind of the, where I was, because I remember um, the 13th of March yep. uh, was the day that Rudy Gobert touched the microphones. Um <laughs> Everyone remembers Rudy at the press conference touching the microphones and everyone saying oh, how ridiculous that is. And then like two days later, basketball was shut down and it's like, oh, this might be a real thing. And then everything. Yeah. So so for us, we, we predated that a little bit. Um, and I'll talk about a little uh, a, sh a short term shift we had in our strategy for a little bit as well. So we've seen, you know, a lot of a lot of this, these trends emerging. Right. Because we've seen the, the explosion of available channels. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, it went from email and voice to email and voice and video to email and voice and video to social. And it, it's, it's really interesting to me because I think that, you know, companies like Slack, first of all, Slack is an amazing company, um, executionally you know, superior. They're, they're really, really good at what they do. But we would probably disagree at Nextiva with their, with their premise of trying to rid the world of email, right? The, the right channel for, right for, for customers, particularly, is the channel that they yeah. want to use. Right. And if you don't have the channel that they want to use, you're going to be on the outside looking in. So the, so for us, we've seen all along that customers or companies uh, had the expectation set by their customers that more channels would be available, that they'd be able to communicate with them across all of these moons, not excluding them. And how they bring them together becomes a, a more and more difficult task. That's one aspect. The other aspect is that um, and this data gets this updated so frequently, I lose track of it. But the entire idea that uh, the entire it was in the stats, like 95 percent of all the data re recorded in human history has been recorded in the last 18 months. And there is there is this very real explosion of, of data. So much of it is customer. So much of it is dynamic. It's either video or it's recorded voice or what have you. And, the, and, and you know, you you go back a ways in this industry, as do I. In a lot of cases, communications companies have been of the perspective that once I create a connection, my job is done and I can I can go yeah. on my merry way, right? You know, it went from copper fiber, it went from from the closet to the cloud. But in a lot of cases, it was you know I create that connection, I make, I make I facilitate the connection between two people, and then and then my job is done. But with digitized communication, all of that content right becomes the real asset for the company. Because anything that's digitized can be recorded, it can be transcribed, it can have AI applied to it, it can insights can be delivered, and then and then those insights can be delivered into business tools like CRMs. So that had been the path that we had always been on, right? Those are trends that go back 20 years. What was different about the pandemic is it accelerated all of that. I remember walking into, I remember walking into into um, like my, my local pastry shop. I'd like to call it a coffee shop, but I, but I'm stopping there for pastry. Who are we kidding? Um, and you know, I would, I would stop in there. And of course they the first thing was they were closed, but this is a, this is a business that I would stop into, you know, maybe three, three times a week, but they had no idea who their customers were. They had this thriving business pre pandemic, but they had, they had, you know, they take credit cards, they have transactions, they yeah. know me, my face, they know my regular drink, but they have no idea who I am. So the pandemic accelerated 
all of that. You need to establish additional channels. They need to gather customer information. They need to retain all of that context. It really accelerated that. And I actually don't think that as businesses, we've, we've found the right answer yet. I think that we're still, to some extent, two years later, scuffling a lot. Have, have, so there was a lot there. Let me, let me ask two very specific questions. I mean, we talk a lot about on, on the podcast about really kind of, it's been, it's internally centric, right? It's like employees and collaboration and communication and whether it's, we're having a conversation about with a network provider or we're having a conversation with a communications provider, we always seem to go back to that. Um, but we have had a few that have been very CX centric. So I just want to, I want to pull something out of what you just said, um, because I think it's very clear. Hybrid work is different. Locations are less important. Like, yeah, of course, right. The applications blew up and now we're, you know, several applications have become a verb and we're all contending with them. Yes. Right. But I think the one thing that we have a tendency not to recognize at the same level is, is customer expectations. So I'll ask it this way. And I think you just, you basically just alluded to it to customer expectations of companies change in the pandemic. And what do you think IT leaders should be thinking about if you are assuming your answer is yes? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, I think they were, again, I think they were changing before the pandemic. And I actually think that the thing that made them change is this yeah. device, right? Because the reality is um, I now have access to the sum of human history in my pocket 24 seven. I have access to ability to communicate with any channel, any way I want to uh, at any time. And I expect that whoever I'm doing business with can respond to me with full context and full awareness. Now, the interesting thing about the company customer dynamic is this, is, th is that I think maybe for the first time ever, the balance of information has swung in the favor of the consumer rather than the business, because the consumer has the full context and has the availability of all channels. And many of the businesses that they're doing business with, they're still segmented in their pre-pandemic ways, right? They've got functional organizations and functional organizations are using different tools and those tools aren't necessarily linked together. And, you know, such and such a department uses video and such and such a department uses, you know, collaboration, such and such a department, uh, you know, uses, uses the, the, the contact center. And in a lot of those cases, those things, those tools are still not connected. So, so the customer's expectations, I think, were more created by iPhone than they were by pandemic. But what pandemic did was uh, increased the number of channels, the number of the number of ways customers expected to be able to deal yeah. with their with with the companies they do business with. And I think that most businesses are on their back heels now, right, trying to sort out how we create the customer experience that, that customers expect, which is why I think that that. You know, the, it, the topic comes up in, in many of your conversations where the, the, the you know, integration or the interconnection between UC and CC becomes really important because the lines really have to, you know, to the point of you and many of your guests blurred between who serves a customer, what information they need to do that and how that interaction should go. So I, I think that we're starting to get some of those answers, right? But I think we, I think we still have a long, a long way to go in this journey, which is Yeah, I mean, the customer like. has has the advantage of context every time they talk. I mean, when you, you end up, whether it's whatever channel you choose, you end up with a support person in one of the companies that you deal with or a customer, you know, customer service or retail or whatever, at one of the companies you deal with, you remember every time you've interacted with them, but they but they certainly don't and their systems certainly don't. So you end up in a situation where you're educating the other side about your relationship often. And I, that's where I think the expectation has, has changed. I mean, you know, it's funny. This is not where I was planning on going, but let's just stay on this road because I think it's a good one. It'll be really interesting. You know, you talked about creating all of these recorded artifacts, right? And there's kind of, there's sort of two ways to solve the problem that you just talked about. Either you're in a massive system integration project, right? On tools that, you know, don't have kind of object consistency in them. And I mean, can imagine wrapping your head around that. Um, but we do have this new thing emerging um, and emerging very, very quickly, which is we've got recorded unstructured data and we have AI. Does AI solve for some of this and tell tell our listeners a little bit like the way you guys are thinking about it? And because I mean, that when you say AI, I was like, oh, yeah. what's this magic thing? The robots are going to take over the world. But, you know, in reality, if I you know, rephrase sort of what you just said. A business has all of this recorded information. It's unstructured, which means it's difficult to connect. It, you know, 
by coding, right? It's difficult to connect in a database or in an application, but we do have AI. So you know, what does Nick Steven think about that? What does Chris think about that? Is that a way to start connecting? Yeah. Up? And, and I think you're, I think you're dead on the problems. Like, like, you, like, you know, and, and I, and I, I hope that, you know, a lot of the, 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 our, our industry peers see, see these problems emerging as well. Right. Because you're absolutely right. I think that one of the things you run into is that, you know, maybe for the first time, eh, maybe not for the first time, but more and more, um, the expense of this technology is the need to integrate them is creating winners and losers, people that, that, that don't have paths to success because either they don't have the budgets or they don't have, you know, they're not technologists themselves, or they don't have the army of consultants or the people that can administer those tools. So they more and more, there's more of those companies that are kind of left out in the cold, not having access to the best stuff. And, and I think that, you know, I, I, I actually, you know, one of our cores is to deconstruct that, to make, you know, depending on regardless of where, where a company is or where a business is in their, in their life cycle, have the right type of tool available. And I think that AI is, we would say that AI is, is a part of that equation. And, you know, you know, AI could be, of course, we, we, all, we all think about the advanced algorithms and, and, and all the yeah. things that scare people, but it can be as simple, simple as creating a tag, a topic tag on a conversation and having that tag route, route that conversation to a party that is interested in that conversation, right? That, you know, that's technology that's, that's available today, right? We're putting it into our tools, um, you know, and, and, and the idea there is that everything that we're talking about in terms of not just creating communication, but the value of the conversation itself, well, that the value of that conversation itself becomes powerful when it is able to be, you know, retained as context and then shared and then leveraged in building those relationships. And I think that we would say that that's where, where, where hopefully all of us as an industry are going. Uh, it's certainly where Nextiva is going and to be able to, you know, to retain that context, share that context, guide that, those relationships in the way that they need to be with the use of AI. Because at, 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 at the core of all of this, you're absolutely right. There's so much conversational data that's available to some extent. We, we, we joke about this uh, to some extent that it's not unforeseeable that the pace of data, particularly dynamic data that looks like yeah. video and, and conversations, outpaces what a what a typical CRM could keep up with. And that, you know, there's there's a there's a there's a version of the world where um, a communication system or, or a UCC or UC or CC system could end up being the system of record customer record because of yeah. because of the retention of that contextual rich contextual information around the customer. You know, wow, that's an interesting that's a hot take right there, I think, right? But you're right. I mean, the you'll end up with more data in those systems than you will in the CRM. And the CRM becomes, I mean, record of where the artifacts are stored, but the artifacts don't live in CRM kind of at the end of the day, if you get it right. Chris, let me ask you an interesting right. thing, because there's very often there's, you know, we have a tendency to pick these acronyms that's AI today, right? But, it, you know, it's been 10 things over the last however many years. and you know, as technologists, we paint this broad stroke, like this will change the world. And, and, you know, functionally the end user doesn't have their head around it yet. And it's going to take longer for them to get there. And there's this kind of yin and yang between like, you know, the questions we're trying to solve and the technology, and then the technology gets above the questions we're trying to, and it does this, right? Do you, I'll tell you what my feeling is kind of on where we are right now with that, as it relates to AI. And I'm curious what your thoughts are. When I engage with people on AI today, and I'm in, you know, we have a huge customer experience practice here in our business. So we're always meeting with customers about, you know, how to improve. And they jump right into the tech. You know, they're like, we want AI, we want bots, we want, you know, and I, and I always, I'm like, I get that, but stop, <laughs> right? Like, what's the question? You know, and I, I feel like right now the technology is further than our imaginations. If you get where I'm going, like most everybody thinks I'm going to just turn on AI and my world's going to change, but they don't actually know what they want out of the AI yet. Like we haven't wrapped our head around the possibilities in our own businesses yet. Do you, do you see that when you're having these conversations? Do people kind of use it like they used to use the word cloud? I'm going to cloud my business and everything's going to change. And, yeah. or do they really know what they want to do with it yet? Uh, I, I don't think they do. Um, I, I think that um, I think this is part of human nature that our 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 first tendency 
is to think of our own application and how it can make my own life better rather than you know live live outside of myself so when i think about the the uses of ai and, and where people typically go today right um they talk about it in terms of things like how it how it facilitates uh, intelligent routing in, in in the contact center how it facilitates easier answers and 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 those are completely legitimate you know in fact those are capabilities that people should deploy right and and we deploy those as well as everybody else um but those are very much business efficiencies yeah. based answers right that's that's about the speed of getting an answer to a customer in a standardized way it's about decreasing the volume of inbound interactions it's about you know the the cost side of the equation right there's not nearly as much conversation in my experience that is around how we build better how we use ai and the technology to build better quality relationships how we leverage the context we have from all of these interactions to build understanding between two parties right and and i think that i think that that when you when you ask a business what what they want to do right you know you know i'll go back to you know um intelligent connected experiences is 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 the flavor of the day when you, when you, when you go back ask businesses what they want to do they they you know they want to grow customers right they want they want to create relationships that grow customers they want to they want to you know grow revenue keep people employed retain their best employees reduce costs maybe take a little bit home for themselves right and and that's not otherworldly so couching the conversation in the context of how how we create those experiences becomes really becomes the question and and I'm glad you brought brought CX up and I'm going to add in EX because you know there's you know long kind of standing doctrine that the best way to have you know exceptional customer experiences is to have best employee experiences right and it's like you know if you read like um Heskett and the service profit chain and you know they'll they'll go chapter and verse on that stuff um and I think that it's still part of the continuum and 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 there's a couple studies that I was reading a couple months ago one that suggests that you know employee employee satisfaction is at a 20 year low right and and depending on on the study you read customer satisfaction is also at a multiple decades low so with all the investment that we've had in this area with with all of the um tools and capabilities we've got more stuff available than ever we're we're still not always hitting it from the employee experience and pandemic's a big part of that and how how we haven't adapted tools to fit the to, to fit the modern use cases and we're tiring the hell out of our our people and you know you know you know secondarily you know how we apply this technology to actually really build relationships using that context so i think that there's i think there's big unfinished questions there for 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 all of us in how we use these capabilities to actually do solve those those base level problems of how do i create a relationship how do i you know serve this customer a little bit better and 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 know understand and remember them every time they walk through my door so that they feel like they're you know i may have 10,000 customers but they feel like they're yeah. you know they're the only one yeah right? and i think i think sometimes so, there's also just adding on top of that when we when we talk to people who are just starting to get their head around what you know what can ai do or what can these new technologies do they're like, well, you know, I have this problem and I think AI can solve it. And oftentimes the problem is the lack of data, right? And, and I was like, listen, AI is brilliant at connecting data, but it can't manufacture it, right? So, you know, <laughs> right. if there isn't a place for it to go get your customer information, you know, the big one that I run in that, that we, we kind of run into a lot is, and it, it's been mentioned a couple of times in various pod episodes is like, you know, I want to eliminate agents and put a bot in between. I'm like, okay, great you know, where's your knowledge management? And they're like, what's that? I'm like, well, we got a problem because there's nobody can teach the, you know, if your processes aren't someplace, then AI is not writing them. Like it doesn't know that this thing has to go from that department to that department yeah. and how to process an order until you can inform it. Right. I mean, it does, it can then draw conclusions, but you've got to start from something. Uh, so it's sort of like, you know, yeah. good technology doesn't paper bad process still. Right. So it's like, you get a little bit of that you yeah. need to contend with. Um, Chris, we could stay on this one forever. This was super informative. I'm going to give you one more uh, business related question, and then we're going to have a little bit of fun. And I have to do it. You're in the, you, you know, you guys have a legacy, I should say, in UCAS, um, as have a lot of the companies that we've we've had in here. But he approaches this slightly differently. You've done a good job telling us what's different about the way you guys look at the market. But I'll throw one out to you. You know, Teams and Zoom became verbs in the pandemic, and it was you know for a whole host of reasons, some of it marketing genius, some of it, they were just already on the desktop, you know, in case of Microsoft. Um, 
friend, foe, how do you guys play? How do you think about in that in the context of kind of your, you know, business heads up display, if you will, tell us how you fit in with that picture. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we see that, first of all, we work with both those companies, right? We integrate with both those companies. We create solutions that, that have, have both of those, those capabilities inset into them. And, and it would be borderline delusional for us to suggest that we were going to replace either one of them, right? Because, because they're necessities. Um, you know, they're, they're well-run organizations and, and, and they're actually really good at what they do. So, you know, from that perspective, a lot of respect and they're, they're, they're necessary. And the way I would, the way I would couch, um, our approach to, uh, you know, to zoom and, um, uh, and, and teams. And I would almost say this as well about companies like Slack and even some CRM, some, some CRM capabilities, right? It, it, it all depends on what your, what your perspective is and where you are in your, in your maturation journey, right? There are companies that are extremely involved and have made deep investments in their, in their tech stack, right? If you've made millions of dollars investment in your, in your Microsoft suite, or your 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 Salesforce suite, you know, there's no Nextiva that's going to dislodge that or displace that, right? For us, we want to create the best experience that integrates that and makes ultimately the delivery of what I talked about in the outset of those multiple channels of conversation threaded together in the most cohesive way that yields that context that can actually be delivered into business tools to improve those relationships. That, that can happen completely on Nextiva's capabilities, or it can happen through integrated experiences such as a Zoom or a Slack or a Teams or, or whatever, right? So, so for those companies that have made that investment, we want to be the best at integrating natively with those experiences so that the, that the investments that companies have made, they can get the most out of it because they've spent a ton on them. Um, as you look at other areas of the market, we serve you know companies all over the spectrum. We serve some of the smallest businesses that don't know what a CRM is, and and for a lot of those businesses, they're not looking for a lot of the functionality. Uh, and, and quite frankly, I'd argue that you know even mid market, there's a lot of virtual yeah. Rolodex type use case of CRM capabilities. Um, you know, so for those types of capabilities, we want to bring all those experiences together in one native way, right? And then. You know, as we start to think about where our platform goes, you know, today it looks like, um, you know, it looks like, you know, your standard, you know, customer communications channels integrated with UC and, and, and those components. But we're not very far from, you know, channels like online reviews, right? Um, you know, online review management and um, social media management and messenger, right? All of those things ultimately get integrated into the platform so that, it, it ultimately becomes about yeah. bringing that cohesive customer story together and creating the environment where teamwork and customer work can happen in the same place. And if, if you know, when Teams and Zoom are, are needed to be a part of that, that's great. They should be a part of that. Where they're not, Got we'll it. have capabilities. All right, really good. And I think you know, that may answer our first fun question. Um, but you know, this was a really compelling look at the way that you guys look at the market. I appreciate it. Um, this is this is going to end up being a really good episode, and I'm excited about it. Um, we only have a couple minutes left, so these are going to be a little bit rapid fire. Uh, but let's go through them. We ask everybody for a shameless prediction: 18 to 24 months um, can be in tech. Um, you could double down on your Chiefs prediction. You can do whatever you like, but 18 to 24 months. Tell me something that you think you Chris sees is going to happen. Um. I think we're going to start to see from a business standpoint, I think we're going to start to see uh, the emergence of what we would talk about as, as digital work hubs, which is, you know, fancy analysts talk for one tool that does a job of more than one tool. Um, you know, I, I, that's, that's, that's a, a lot of where we're going in terms of bringing a lot of the channels together, you know, creating that context um, and, and using that context to deliver business tools. I think that other companies are, are doing the same thing. Microsoft's actually leading the charge in, in this. In a lot of cases, Google's leading the charge in this, um, you know, and you, you have companies like, like Monday.com is a really interesting one that they may not be in the UC space, but at, at their, at their core, they're bringing similar tools together to enable a yeah. workflow without context switching. I think what you're going to see from a business standpoint is the, 20 year hold on best of breed siloed applications. Yeah. I think, I think that's going to start to get chipped away because people start, they really start to see the emotional and, 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 and cognitive tax that that is having, as well as the actual, you know, based on where we're at in the economy, you know, the, the actual cost of, of some of those tools. So, so that's, that's my prediction on the business side, uh, on the, on the athletic side, uh, I think you had uh, Sanjay from Vonage on uh, a while ago and he, he, 
He predicted that uh, soccer was going to be, gain popularity in the United States. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I'm Canadian born and bred. Um, I, I don't have any delusions that, that hockey is going to yeah. become America's national pastime. Um, but I will, th I will say this, and, I, and this is a bit of a double down. 18 months from now, really, really 12 months and a week from now, the Chiefs will have won their, won their fourth Super Bowl. Um, okay, you, sorry, that's a double down if there in, ever was in, one. Uh, I appreciate that. Okay, than, we will revisit that yeah. here. That you yeah, might have I, just put something back to back. that we're going to stick on LinkedIn twelve months from now. So we'll see how that goes. Um, two more quick questions. Uh, we've been talking a bit about the pandemic. Um, you can decide whatever the next um, you know gating event is, dystopian future, what have you. But Chris wakes up one day after whatever that is, and you have one functioning app on your phone. What is it? Oh, I mean, it's my phone, right? You know, at, at, at our, at our, you know, we, we say it around here, you know, conversations are the lifeblood yeah. of business. They're the lifeblood of relationships. Um, you know, and, and part of what we're trying to do is, um, you know, do what human relationships have been really good at is capturing the context and in, in the, in the history between two people and retaining that to be able to be used. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, you can, you can say it's B2B yeah. or B2C. It's just people. Right. And so I could so be the wisest the day, answer we've heard so far, because you think about it, you're like people have been like, oh, but the ESPN app, which is great, except no one's playing sports after the night, you know, after the zombies attack. All right. Last one. Uh, here's a fun one. Um, obviously, you're a marketing guy, so you're, you know, you're an alpha dog in the business, but I'm going to ask you to pick a supporting role here. OK, you get to be either the uh, bass player in your favorite band, uh, the a supporting actor the supporting actor in your favorite movie, or you get to be like the third down eight play a game gadget back for the Kansas city chiefs. What's your supporting role? So um, it's, it's probably bass player. And, and it, it's one of those things I, I heard it described at one point. Um, um, uh, yeah. I, I, I like music. I think everyone does. Um, you know, I heard it described of uh, John Paul Jones's role. Okay in in led zeppelin right and you know the way it was described is he kept everyone tethered to the earth because everyone else right you've got you've got bonham over there that's going you know he, you know he's going to run away you've got plant who's you know screaming his lights out you've got page that's going to you know fly away and, and bonham kept everyone kind of grounded and together yeah. and without that they would have kind of gone off into the ether and 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 the role of that bass player is to keep everyone together, to keep everyone grounded and, and moving in the right direction. So aspir hopefully aspirationally for me, that would well, be a role I, that I would, I would a, like to be. That's a great answer. I've had a previous life career in music and um, we call that what you're talking about is called the pocket, right? It's like the, pl the place that holds it down. So, you know, it's there that gives everybody else the opportunity to create around it. But if that wasn't there, you just have you'd have a mess on your hands. So, all right, bass player. And I'm assuming then it's bass player in Led Zeppelin is really the answer to the question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Why not? Uh, or them Perfect. Both so, those, I, I hey, can everyone, well. this has been Chris Rayburn and, this, and an awesome conversation we've had. Chris from, he's from Nextiva. Um, certainly you'll have the opportunity to see a little bit more about them uh, coming up. We'd love to have Chris uh, or one of his teammates back on the pod. Um, if you've hung with us this long, we're hoping this has been a really interesting conversation um, and we will catch you on another episode of The Bridge very soon. Listen, if you made it this far, there must have been some good content or you're just a fan or a relative of mine. In either case, we appreciate you spending your most valuable asset with us, your time. We don't take that lightly. We'd also like to say one more time that we are appreciative of Bridgepoint Technologies and their belief and sponsorship of the show. We hope that if you or someone you know is thinking about your company's digital transformation or simply the next IT project that you may not have that resources, budget, or time to get to, I'm sure that Bridgepoint, one of the country's fastest growing technology advisory and procurement firms can help. Check out Bridgepoint at bridgepointtechnologies.com. Don't forget the E on Bridgepoint. Or simply reach out to me at Skinka, S-K-I-N-K-A, -K -K at bpt 3 B pt3.net. Also take a minute, please, if you would, to give us a five-star review on your favorite platform. It helps gives us the visibility to reach other people like you. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Bridge. I am Scott Kinka. And until next time, there's a lot of noise out there in business and in life. Do what you can 
to be the signal. Thanks.